right uh, it's time for my favorite part interactive. yes time to get interactive yeah. good evening good Steve. evening looking very spiffy this uh, evening what word is that <laughs> <laughs> it just means you look really nice thank in your you, suit thank you okay thank now it's the end of day on day one of the basic education certificate examination over 400,000 students are starting their journey to higher education. Exam fever is really unpleasant, but it appears some students never seem to get a hang of it. Hope you dealt with it much better when you were in his shoes. Now, the first round of the much-anticipated MPP primaries is over, but the shock still lingers as many are yet to come to terms with the victory of Francisca Oting Mensa. But does age really matter? This is Joy News Interactive. My name is Ifwa Akwa Harrison. Let's connect after this. <laughs> And you can join us via all our social media platforms. Find us on facebook.com forward slash join news on TV. We are also on Twitter at join news on TV or at join interactive GH. Our email address is join news. I am at multi TV And our WhatsApp number is 0540109009. Remember to add your name and location when sending us a message via WhatsApp. So how many years ago did you write your BECE? Do you remember how it felt like when you wrote your first paper? I was excited to be finishing GHS, but I was very anxious because I wasn't sure what to expect in the exam. Well, some 438,000 plus GHS students experienced what it feels like to write their first external exams today. The candidates sitting in the exams are made up of 228,724 males and 208,306 females. This year's number represents an increase of over 15,000 over last year's figures of 422,946. So how many years has it been since you wrote your BECE? How has it been since you wrote the BECE? Um, six years now. Um, like 11 years ago. It's like eight years now. Uh, I think 11 years now. Day to be somewhere seven years, seven years, yeah. Okay, so it's been 13 years. It's about 13 years now. I'm still counting, but you've also been sharing your experiences. Any memorable events that happened with your bad? Uh, well, it was the last paper, and I thought um, when French. And then the teacher came in and asked us that, okay, if you can help anyone, you can just help the person. That was that was the only thing I can remember that happened. And when we were writing, there were people who really learned a lot, and they were writing and collecting uh, answer sheets a lot. And some of my friends too who couldn't learn very well, they were like, this week I can't write, so they slept for like 30 minutes before um, they were able to write something. Yeah, I think on my first day, um, the supervisor at our end asked the class who among them is the best. And they mentioned my name and a lady. And they asked if we are kind enough to help our, our friends with answers to pass. And they were all saying, okay, the girl is able to do that, but I'm wicked. I don't teach people and all that. So the, she was saying that, okay, then I have to look at them and help our friends pass the exam. But I told you was that it's an examination, so we have to do independent work. So that was something memorable and so very fresh in my mind, yeah. I think I remember there was a rewrite 
after some papers, which I can't remember now. Yes. I remember we rewrote almost all our papers and we had to go back to school to do that. Now we've asked you on Facebook as well, how many years ago did you write your BECE? -E? A lot of interesting comments coming on here. Let me see if I can quickly mirror your comments and then we can take them. Patrick Boisfort says, 18 years ago in 1997, when we used to write 12 subjects, LOL, wow, 12 subjects, it's a lot. And Dominus Mensa says, five years ago, I wished my beloved sister, who is writing her BEC, good luck and all the best. Fatai Salau says, I'm always excited writing exams. I will be writing this year's WASI private exam at Aveku College in Benu State, Nigeria, starting in September 2015. Uh, many are called, but few are chosen. I don't play with my exams. Amigo Seth Ofori says, I wrote mine five years ago in 2008 at Sec Tech. Okay. Wishing my kid brother all the best in his exams. Samira Seidu says, 13 years ago, Abeku Krenzel says, I wrote my BEC in 2012. That's three years ago. In fact, I was nervous at the start, but it went cool. Gasu Divine says, hmm, I wrote my BEC 13 years ago in 2002. And Akosia Bema says, wrote my BEC in 2001, so 14 years already how time flies and a lot of you sending in your comments about when you wrote your BECE certificate examinations. For a lot of people age is just a number. Others believe a person's age to a large extent this determines one's level of experience and how wise a person is. Now on Saturday, a rather surprising yet welcoming news hit the Kwabre East constituency in the MPP primaries when a second year law student of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology beat an incumbent MP to the seat. Now there's been a lot of talk since the young lady's victory but the, some of the discussions happen to be her age. So we ask, does age really matter in politics? In actual fact, age per se will not matter if it, it, the person is above 18 years. But the fact of it is that uh, sometimes these two political parties are trying to differentiate age in, in a, in a uh, work that, let's say, the NDC said, they said NDC people have. Uh, what do we call young, young, young people, and it is not good for our political destiny. But I should think they are learning. And with this one that the young lady has come in as this, and I think it's good for us because the two political parties will now be competing with ideas. Now, to in the computer world that we are as at now, the young ones are more faster even than the older ones. We could see that sometimes the older ones we sometimes think they are because of the age, the ideas are faded and all this thing. So I think it is good for them. I don't think age really matters. So far as she has the idea and knowledge about what she's doing, then it's okay. Politics at age, age doesn't really matter. This we are in the 21st century and I think age doesn't really matter. Because age people age at times age for age, when you grow up, you gain knowledge. Say when you grow up, you gain knowledge. But for age for politics and age Maybe the younger, the younger fellow candidates may be more educated than the older candidates. And for the younger candidates, maybe he might know a lot of things without, but, but, uh, but uh, the other candidate wouldn't know. 
I don't think age matters in politics because well, we are in an, we are in an era where sometimes a little girl can say something that would ill adults. Okay, so it doesn't really matter whether she's 22, she's 26. What really matters is the impact she's going to give in parliament. Is she going to be there just because people are going to parliament or she's going to bring some change into their country? Uh, in politics, we are talking about ideas. How, how much, how, how better you can do to convince people, you understand? And if the young lady won advance someone who's already in the parliament, it doesn't matter. It means she's coming with innovation ideas and people may, may follow her because of that. So we need new changement. We need young guys, young people to come in power. You, you need them to involve in politics because politics is not only for old people. She's, yeah, since she's young, people can understand her very uh, clearly than an old man. So I think is a, a, there is no problem about that. The fact that she's good and she's capable of doing everything, I think it doesn't matter. Finally, I think age doesn't really matter. Once the person is more than 18 and in a very sound mind and very youthful, and if that person can work, that's all, you understand? It's just unfortunate that in our tradition, people think, I mean, the aged is wise, which is not so. Fine, some aged people may be wise, but it doesn't cut across you know, most of the time. So the consensus from the streets is that age does not really matter. Now, Francis Cortimens, the young MP aspirant in question, has been speaking to our Shanti regional correspondent, Mohamed Nuruddin, about her age and other matters. There's always this notion or there's always this perception that um, Ghana politics is basically for the, let me say, the aged, let me put it that way. So I wanted to I mean, give myself the opportunity and try it and see if um, Ghanaians will give me that opportunity or will give me that privilege. Uh, wh what I know in life is that uh, no matter your age, once you want to do something, you can do it. Age is just a number. Um, once you're able to show maturity, once um, you have people to support you, no matter where you are, no matter your age, you can do something. So that was what motivated me. So I wanted to just use my life as a form of a sacrifice to the youth, to believe in themselves, to have hope that you can start politics at any age. Uh, you should just be focused, you should just be determined, and I'm sure God will use it to do so many things. Let's talk about the primaries. Uh, how did you manage to, I mean, secure that um, uh, f huge figures? I mean, uh, considering the fact that the incumbent MP uh, is known and some other figures who came in to contest the, the, the seat. How did you manage to win it? I think it was by God's grace. Honestly, I can't really describe it. To be honest with you, I think it was by God's grace and, and the fact that the delegates um, had a trust in me. They believed in my message and my form of campaigning. My, my strategy was just to build a personal relationship with them. So mostly I was visiting, visiting them one-on-one -on -one in the house. If it has to be in the farm, I will have to join you there. Whatever that you're doing, I will take part in it. And I think that helped me. Because at a point in time, they, 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 they all realized I was part of them. You heard it from her. And now let's put the controversy surrounding her age to rest, shall we? Francisca is 22 years old. And let's find out how social media is reacting to that. We posted earlier on our Facebook page and asked you if age matters. And Oforiata says this question shouldn't be asked in the first place. The Constitution says at the age of 18, one can decide and vote, meaning a grown mind is being talked about here. Okay. Halidu Safiu says age does not matter if only you have the mandate for articulating issues. For articulating issues. I'll end it there. Kwesi Apia says the question must be about experience, the practical encounter of the service and sacrifice she has made for the country. To be able to get to parliament, one must rise through the ranks and not just 
leap there. And Abdullahi Mohammed says leadership is not about book knowledge but wisdom. Let me take some of your comments coming through on WhatsApp. And this one is from Mensa, Richard Mensa, who is watching the show in Kumasi. He says, the MPP knows, the MPP delegates know what is best for them and they have done it. Then he adds greetings to all the BEC candidates across the country. Joe Lati in Gushegu says, age doesn't matter, care is care is what matters and then this one comes from razak who's watching the show in tamale he says congrats to francisca for her victory age is just a number and it's the same thing being reiterated by gao su who is also watching the show in tamale he says age is always just a number i wish her the very best of luck in 2016 and at this point i'll take a break i'll have a bit more of your comments and another issue that we would like to talk to you about after this you're still watching joy news interactive with me if for aqua harrison now, 17-year-old Richard Jangba, whose story we told some months ago, is dead. Richard fell from a coconut tree after his teacher at the Suhum Abuabo Sonko Presby School asked him to pluck coconut for him to quench his thirst. Now, Richard developed several complications due uh, to the fall. His uncle, Samuel Na, who confirmed his death to join news, said the family could not raise uh, the amount to treat his medical condition. And let's pick your reactions to Richard's story, which is on our Facebook page. And we told you what happened to him. And Fatai Salau saying, may his gentle soul rest in peace. Teachers say their reward is not in heaven. We wonder where students' rewards are. Maybe it is better to disobey your teacher sometimes. You may even report your teacher. Students should be th taught on how to behave with their teachers. Richard Jangba's case is a good lesson to both teachers and students. Newman Stanley says, Everybody in one way or another is asks students to help in doing something for him or her in school. But it's just unfortunate that this accident has occurred. But the good Lord knows best. May the soul of the young man rest in peace. Hmm, coconut. How could you, a teacher, ask a student to climb up? And a lot of you are asking for his soul to rest in peace. Nanayi Nchiwa says, and what has been done to the said teacher? I'm even pissed off. Come on, is climbing coconut tree part of the syllabus? Ah, Ghana. Hmm. And Bismarck. Aboge says the teacher needs to be jailed, but in some way I put the blame on the boy. He was asked to go and learn not to go and climb trees. He can't force and be pushed on the tree. What would have happened if he had informed the teacher that he can't climb the tree? Um, from our investigations, it seems he did tell the teacher he couldn't climb the tree, and the teacher insisted that if he didn't climb the tree, he would punish him. So... Bismarck, that's what happened. Upon Law says, so a teacher couldn't afford to buy common coconut, which is even less than two CDs. How on earth could a teacher ask a student to climb a coconut tree? May his soul rest in peace. And a lot of RIP is also coming on Facebook. Sam John, in, uh, Sam John Pino from Nalerigu is saying rest in peace. That's on WhatsApp. So those are just a few of your comments coming through on social media. May his soul rest in peace. Now, Lord Edu Asari has what's trending on Twitter. It's another Monday and 
the basic education certificate examinations have started. Well, do you remember when you took your BC? Hashtag throwback BC has been trending the whole day. Let's go see how people are reminiscing on Twitter. First tweet is from Inshira, who tweeted Kofi. The swagger when you are going to get your result after it is rumored you topped your batch in BC. Oh yeah, that one. Next is from Nene Kole. That look your mates give you when the paper is difficult and you request for an extra sheet. My classmate started wearing glasses just to look intelligent for the BEC. After all that results, <laughs> yeah, mutu. <laughs> okay, and, and that was from 3500 who tweets at KHXBIE. Right, moving on, this is from Mina Oye. I remember how I did you on 4 for the bond of 1844 for social studies paper. Yes, that one. Memories. Hmm. Let's move on to Kweoni Abrantier, who says he could qualify to be a French then, but now <laughs> he can hardly conjugate. Chew and poor. Oh, Bema. Right, finally, this is from Kobe Kent, who tweets at Pa Bruni GH. Wow. Some people will ask you to spell words for them after mentioning it as an answer to their questions. When people are frustrated and they are tensed up, the things will forget you will marvel. <laughs> okay, very interesting tweets there. BC memories, man. But well, over to you, Ava, and this hasn't worked trending. My name is Laura Hidrasak. Thanks, Lord. Well, BEC is trending, and that happens to be our video for the day. What happens when your apple swerves? <laughs> I have so many friends. My friend is last week. What you do? No. That was a video that was sent in by our Eastern Regional Correspondent Haruna Yusuf Wompini. Uh, that was uh, about a boy whose apple swerved. Hi, Steve. Welcome back. Hey. So the 16-year-old in the video is a 16-year-old. His name is Collins Oforian. He started crying and said he could not write the paper because he could not hold his pen. Oh, my God. Yeah. His, his apple swerved or something like that. Maybe. <laughs> Hmm. It's not funny. Sorry, it's not funny. funny if it's a post web. It's a serious issue. Ah, okay. <laughs> but my director is saying we should laugh. I but know. I'm putting myself in the boy's shoes. Okay. Writing an exam. Writing an exam, it's not a good place to be in. I actually don't like exam. You me, 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 <laughs> for that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we wrap up on the <laughs> show name today. <laughs> My name is Ifo Akwa Harrison. Thank you for joining us. And, Bye. And up next is Joy is exclusive uh, on albinism. Bye -bye. <laughs>